Hello and welcome back to the shop. Today we're finally getting back to working on this transmission for our dusty 2015 Silverado HD. Finally got some time to get back to this, so today we're going to try to get the transmission torn apart and diagnosed so that we can start working on rebuilding it. So here's all the parts I've gotten so far. I'm sure when we get into it, there'll be something else I don't know about, but this should hopefully get us started. This is kind of a full rebuild kit. Came with a filter and then a kit of all the gaskets, O-rings, seals, and the whole transmission. And then a set of clutch packs, both the frictions and the steels. Then I also got a set of the molded rubber pistons. These are the, the pistons that apply the clutch packs. Um, and these are all genuine GM. Came in a kit. It was all from the same supplier. This was genuine. The steels are aftermarket. And then the clutch packs, both the frictions and the steels, are from Ray Baos, or however you want to say that, which is, it is an aftermarket company, but it's supposed to be OEM quality, or some people say it's better than OEM. I don't really know, but it's, it's at least OEM quality. And then also a kit of all the bushings that are in the transmission. The most important part, the book, this has all the technical information, tear down, instructions, rebuild instructions, tells you everything you need to know. Also got some assembly lube and then got a GM reman torque converter in here as well. That'll be the last piece, but that's here as well. So after looking at the book, it looks like our first step is going to be pull this torque converter out, pull the bell housing off, pull the tailstock off, and then we'll flip it over, pull the oil pan off, and that'll be pretty much everything on the outside off, and then we'll start gutting it. Let's see, will this converter just slide or am I going to need to pry? No, it's just going to slide. We'll just set this aside. It's gonna go back as a core. There's some oil. And we should have a new O-ring here in our kit. But I'm gonna leave that here because I'm gonna go through each item and make sure that I've got the right parts. So I'll, I'll, once we got this all apart, I'll take open the seal kit and I'll make sure I've got this and, and go through every individual piece. The other thing I like to do is try to keep all the parts organized. I keep all these random little Ziplocs that come when you buy stuff. This came just something that had bolts or nuts to assemble and it came with this little Ziploc. So I just label them what it is, then put the bolts in there so that I can keep them separate and make sure that they go back together where they were and that I don't lose any of them. Remove the tail stock, remove the oil pan bolts, oil pan filter. I'm gonna roll this back towards me. Pour all kinds of oil on the table. I'm gonna grab an oil pan. This is the dipstick hole it's coming out of. I drained the pan, but obviously there's still some in here. Primary concern here is I'd prefer not to roll the transmission off the table. This pan already had some oil and those filters in there, but some of it made it in there. I'm gonna let that drain and we'll take the rest of these oil pan bolts off. We already took a lot of them off when we drained it and we only put a few of them back on.
there's our pan. We already saw the inside before in a previous video, but I just dumped it out and put it back on. There we go. More oil to dump out. So there's six bolts that you take off to remove just the whole valve body. And they all seem to have this different type of head that looks like it's an e-torx head to me. The book shows it as being a hex head 7mm, but it's obviously not that. I do have some e-torx sockets. They don't fit. The E10, it's just it doesn't quite seat all the way down there. And then the 12 goes all the way down and it's just too big. So it's, it's like it's an in-between size. Well, after doing some research, I kind of got conflicting information on a couple different pages as to what size it is. But they both said it was e-torx plus. So I'm like, what's eTorx Plus? Well, apparently there's a s two different versions of, e of Torx. There's the regular Torx, which is what this is. And then there's a Torx Plus that has a lot wider rounded l lobes. And when you look at these bolts, that's, that's what they look like. They're a lot wider than what these are. I called around and the local O'Reilly's Auto Parts was the winner. They had a set in stock Titan external Torx Plus. So you've got eTorx. Plus, I think it's a 10. Let's see. Yep, that's it. Works well when you have the right socket. And it is loose. So we should be able to just Plop it out of here now. Am I missing a bolt or is there? No, I think it's the seals are holding in there. There we go. So this is the valve body and TCM assembly. So we'll set this aside and rebuild it later. So the next step is to remove this bell housing and front pump cover assembly. I think to make it easier on me, I'm gonna go ahead and put the oil pan back on with just a couple of bolts and flip it back on the oil pan because then this whole housing sits up and is held up by the oil pan. This inner shaft stays in, the, the outer shaft I believe drives the pump and comes with the cover. And the inner shaft is the actual input to the transmission. So you get that O-ring out of the way so that you can slide this off easily. Got all nine bolts out. There's just some alignment dowels, it looks like. Well, it seems like the whole thing is coming. Both shafts. So this is the bell housing slash front cover slash oil pump. On the back here is the oil pump. So this should be our four, five, six clutch assembly and I think the reverse clutch assembly too. And it all comes out as one big unit. Looks like we got this comes out next. There's a thrush, thrust washer, thrust bearing in there. Then we've got three bearings and two shells that come out. Looks like there's one bearing and shell. There's bearing three and there's bearing two. So far, I'm not seeing any anything that's alarming. Bearings look good. Getting lighter. I'm gonna rotate this to where maybe you can see better in the light. That's our big snap ring. There we go.
I would say you need that tool. I don't know that I've been able to do that without all that leverage. So we should be able to pull this center drum out now. That's fighting me a little bit. I think I'm gonna go ahead and lay the thing back down on its side now. And pull the pan out. Well, I can just lift it now. Let's kind of wiggle it, maybe. Oh, it's caught on these seals. This is the seals for the valve body. There we go. I do have new ones of these. Let's see if that helped. The book did say for me to pull those seals out, and I didn't, so that's that'll do it. <clears throat> so now we got to pull this last drum and shaft. It's supposed to all come out of here. And there's a lifting tool that if you have this thing hanging up in your stand, you can thread a tool in there and lift it with it, but we obviously don't have that. But I think I can just use my hands. <laughs> See any reason why I would need a tool for that? And so there's our output shaft unit. So this is all the pieces laid out there. There's the case and all the internal assemblies. And then we've got the front cover, the valve body, and the pan over here. This is what the whole thing looks like laid out on the floor. So next up, I'm gonna go through and start taking apart all the clutch packs and evaluating them for wear, looking at the drums and seeing how they're doing. I've got new frictions and steels um, and I have new pistons. So I have most of the components that could be bad, but it's possible you could have a cracked drum or something like that that can cause some issues. So I wanna inspect over everything really good and make sure that we've got all the parts that we need. There's a snap ring on the outside of this drum, which they don't have any tabs. Looks like it's just a pry off style snap ring. Yeah. Good deal. And then out comes our clutches. We've got a backing plate. These clutches don't look too bad. Don't look worn through to me. Somewhere there. They're definitely they're definitely worn, but they're not like worn down to, to nothing. I don't see any wear marks. I don't see any cracking. I don't see anything weird going on here. They're really easy to take out little snap rings. Three, five reverse clutch steels, clutch plate and steels. And this does look a little burnt to me. The steels look like they've got slipping wear there. And while there's still friction material on, it's black. I don't think it should be black. And then we've got another little snap ring up. This is our first snap ring, and this is our second snap ring. Then we've got, see this guy, so that first one was the 3.5 reverse clutch pack, and we know we were slipping in reverse. We also know we were slipping in um, in some higher gears, by potentially 3 and 5. I, I, that wouldn't surprise me. This is the one, two, three, four clutch plate that we're going into now. And we can see that these frictions are all orange. All, all of the material on this is orange. So versus the black 
on that 3.5 reverse clutch pack. These steels and frictions look like they have some wear to them, but there's 250,000 miles on it. They don't look bad. They look like that 4.5.6 that we looked at at the beginning. Then we get into this big center support, which has the other two clutch packs in there. Let's pull the packs apart. Mm, this one looks really burnt. So this guy was slipping as well. And this is 2.6, okay? I don't see big chunks missing, I just see slipping. And this is the other side. Starting on the back end, so snap it in there. Clutch pack. This is all a low reverse clutch pack. This guy also doesn't look too good. So now it's time to tackle the pump. This assembly, the whole front cover, bell housing, oil pump is all kind of one assembly. I started by pressure washing this. I put the whole case back together with the, the case, the front cover, the tailstock, and the oil pan. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the pump off. These are eight millimeters. Might need more than a quarter inch ratchet to get them broke loose though, we'll see. Uh, this should be okay. And the book specifically states not to take these six bolts on the center off. Those have been aligned from the factory and you have to do that alignment if you take it apart. And I don't wanna to have to do that. And it's not necessary apparently. So. All right, so that's all our bolts out. Should be. So this should just come right off, yeah. Let's take a look. Let's see, are we seeing any? It's a tiny amount of wear right there. So pull off this ring. It's really not looking bad at all. I believe we have one of those to replace. spring out of the way that should help with there we go so that's our slide so that's it for disassembling this there's definitely some wear in this housing well it's been almost four months since I shot that video I had a chunk of time to start working on getting this torn down and then we got busy into the fall and things got even busier than I expected and I just haven't had any time to get back to working on this or to editing video and getting anything out. So that's why there haven't been any videos in quite a while. I do have some time now to get back to working on this. It's a lot colder than it was when I shot that video but uh, we'll be here in the shop this winter trying to get this finished up. After looking at how much wear is on this on the pump side as well as on the bell housing side here, I've decided to go ahead and order a complete remanufactured bell housing and pump assembly. I am back on this project and this is gonna be my number one project priority, trying to get this done in the next month or so. so Hopefully it's not gonna be quite as long before the next video comes out. In fact, I know it won't be, but I really appreciate those of you that have stuck around that had subscribed to the earlier videos and came back to watch this one. So, and if you're new, welcome to the channel. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you back here next time where we start putting this thing back together.